The first lesson is from Psalm 139. O Lord, you have searched me and know me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You have served my thoughts with far away. You search out my path and my lying down, and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word from my tongue, O Lord, you know what you do. You have me in, behind and before, and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Work my own through spirit, for work my own belief for your presence. If I ascend to heaven, you are there. If I make the bed in Shoal, you are there. If I take the wings of the morning, and send up the front of the sun to the sea, even there your hand shall lead me, and your right hand shall hold me fast. If I say, Surely the darkness shall come to me, and the light around me become night. Even the darkness is not dark to you. The night is as bright as the day, and the darkness is as light to you. For it was you who formed my inward heart. You knit me together in the holy room. I praise you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, I know very well. The word of the Lord. The second lesson is from Romans 14, 1 through 12. Welcome to those who are weak in faith, not for the purpose of the quote. Who are always over opinions. Some people who believe in eating anything, but the weak eat only vegetables. Those who eat must not despise those who are abstained, and those who shame must not pass judgment on those who eat. For God is welcome to them. Who are you to pass judgment on servants of another? If you pour their own work and stand at all, and they will be upheld, for the Lord is not able to make them stand. Some judge one day to be better than the other, while others judge all days to be like. Let all be fully convinced and better than another, while others judge all days to be like. Let all be fully convinced in their own life, those who serve, observe the day, observe the God or the Lord, also those who eat, eat and God or the Lord, since they give thanks to God, while those who abstain, abstain and honor the Lord, and give thanks to God. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, we live to the Lord, and if we die, we die to the Lord. So then, whether we live or whether we die, we are the Lord's. For to this end, Christ died in this again, so that he might be Lord of both the dead and the living. Why do you pass judgment on your brother or sister? Or do you you despise your brother or sister? For we will all stand before the judgment seat of God, for it is written, As I live, says the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall give praise to God. So, th so then, each one shall be counseled to God. The word of the Lord. And we invite you once again to stand as you are able for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Gospel of the reading from the 18th chapter of St. Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Then Peter came and said to Jesus, Lord, if another member of the church sins against me, how often should I forgive? many as seven times? And Jesus said to him, not seven times, but I tell you, seventy-seven times. For this reason, the kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who wished to settle accounts with his slaves, and when he began the reckoning, one who owed him ten thousand talents was brought to him, and as he could not pay, his Lord ordered him to be sold together with his wife and children and all his possessions and payments to be made. So the slave fell on his knees before him, saying, Have patience with me, and I will pay you everything. And out of pity for him, the Lord of that slave released him and forgave him the debt. But that same slave, as he went out, came upon one of his fellow slaves who owed him a hundred denarii, and seizing him by the throat, he said, Pay what you owe. And then his fellow slave fell down and pleaded with him, Have patience with me, I will pay you. But he refused, and then he went and threw him into prison until he could pay the debt. When his fellow slaves saw what had happened, they were greatly distressed, and they went and reported to their Lord all that had taken place. And then his Lord summoned him and said to him, You wicked slave, I forgave you all that debt because you pleaded with me. Should you not have had mercy on your fellow slave as I had mercy on you? And in anger, his Lord handed him over to be tortured until he would pay his entire debt. So my heavenly Father will also do to every one of you, if you do not forgive your brother or sister from your heart. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. And you may be seated.
forgive somebody. And even if you cannot pray that prayer, you can be honest before God and confessing that you can't do it. And you know what? God can take that. God can handle that. Because forgiveness is never an act of will. It is a function of grace. Now it's Rally Sunday, the time of beginning again a new year and a new season in the church. And as we begin anew this year, we hear Jesus asking us again to do something that is so very, very difficult to do. Forgive others who have wronged us. And Jesus reminds Peter and Jesus reminds us that we are called to resemble God. We are called to bear God's family trait. We're called to bear God's family likeness in all of our relationships. And forgiving one another is one way we do this. We are most like humans when we judge others. We are most like humans when we hold grudges against others. But we are most like God when we forgive others. So Jesus is always calling us to be found in God's family likeness. And that is always, always a very difficult thing to do. Knowing Jesus, loving Jesus, following Jesus, pointing to Jesus, proclaiming Jesus, obeying His teaching in our choices, trusting Jesus' guidance in all of our problems, surrendering our ego to Jesus' love, dying with Him in our earthly lives, depending on God's grace for our eternity, forgiving others, in God's name. This is the greatest opportunity ever extended to the human race, and it is the reason that we exist as a church. Now it's Rally Sunday, and we're beginning again. We're renewing ourselves, and God is renewing us, and we're going to use this psalm, Psalm 139, for that renewal. We're going to focus on verse 13, where the psalmist says, God has knit me together in my mother's womb. Because God is weaving you together. God is weaving all of us together in relationships. God is knitting us and weaving us together in God's love and in God's faithfulness and even in God's forgiveness. God is doing something in you. He is knitting you together. And He is knitting all of us together. And you know what? God is doing something in Dawson. God is doing something in this congregation. God is doing something in you. God is weaving you to together. God is weaving us together. God is calling us to do some difficult things. Like calling us into His forgiveness and calling us to forgiveness. But that's okay. That's okay, because that's how God weaves you together. That's how God weaves all of us together as the family of faith. I want to tell you something. I want to tell you this. We don't want to be known as the rich church or the poor church. We don't want to be known as the big church or the small church. We don't want to be known as the conservative church or the liberal church. We don't want to be known as the smart church or the gifted church or the strict church or the lenient church or, God forbid, the successful church. What we want to be known as is the church that believes that God is weaving us together always. That is what we want to be known as as a people, that God is knitting you together, that God is weaving all of us together. We want to follow that theme in the coming weeks and months. How is God knitting and weaving us together in God's love?
God knits us together in this love as a Sunday school teacher gathers her classroom of second graders in a circle on the floor and begins the lesson for the day. God is knitting us together in love as a teacher and a student look at each other across the table and begin hashing out a reading problem or a math problem. God knits us together, weaves us together as a group of volunteers gathers in the kitchen to prepare and to serve a meal. God knits and weaves us together as we gather in a hospital room with a loved one and, and the prayer that we pray is one of hope and even as voices tremble that tender power is surely present in that room as well and that is how God knits us together. And we are knit together when we gather on the altar to share in holy communion, or when we gather at the baptismal font to share in this love of God that was at the baptismal font long before we got there to the baptismal font. We are knit together in that water that seals this love. And we are knit together in the presence of love as a hymn is sung, as, as a prayer is uttered, as a, a tennis ball is whacked, or as a football is snapped, or as a runner crosses the finish line, or as we join together as a family of faith. We are knit together in all of these things, and we want to ask God for the power to do not what's possible for us, but we want to ask God to do for us what's impossible for us as a church. So over the next month, we're going to be asking everybody to memorize a little prayer. And here's the prayer. God, weave me together. God, weave us together. Simple prayer. Easy enough. God, weave me together. God, weave us together. Shall we pray it together? God, weave me together. God, weave us together. You know what I do? What I'm going to do is when, you know, I'm going to remember that prayer. I'm going to remember that prayer when I go to bed at night. So the last thing that I remember before I fall asleep is how God is weaving me together and how God is weaving us together. So before I go to sleep, I'm going to say that there. God, weave me together. God, weave us together. And then when I wake up in the morning, guess what my prayer is going to be? Before I even get out of bed, guess what my prayer is going to be? Guess what my prayer is going to be? How God is weaving me together, how God is weaving us together throughout the course of my day. So that's going to be my prayer. I hope that this will be your prayer. God, where do you want to knit me together in this life? Where do you want to knit me together in my work? Where do you want to knit me together in my marriage? Where do you want to knit me together in my ministry, in my stewardship? in my generosity, in my character. God, where are you knitting me together? And this is what we're going to explore in the next weeks and months. So we're going to say those words every week. Let's say it one more time. 